Hey, happy Wine Wednesday Live. It's me, Brian. How you doing? While I wait for people to get here, let's uh, talk about this wine here that we're going to be uh, tasting in just a few minutes. It is a delicious Malbec. We haven't done Malbec yet, so I thought this would be a, a nice time to uh, introduce ourselves to that grape. One of the original Bordeaux varieties, going all the way back to 50 BC with the Roman soldiers who planted the first grapes of that. Long time ago. Hey, uh, as people tune in, a uh, new prize this week. If you just say hello or give me a like, or if you have a comment or anything, please participate in this video because somebody's gonna win a $50 gift card to Riverfront Pizza and Sports Bar, a delicious family restaurant in Covington. So if you want a nice meal, whether it's pizza or wings or any other family type restaurant food, Riverfront Sports Bar and uh, Pizza and Sports Bar is the place to go. Hello, Kathy and Heidi. Wine Wednesday Live it is. So I, I was thinking to myself, what have I not talked about yet? Um, you know, I've done the Cabernet and I've done the, uh, the blends and I've done a, quite a few white wines and sparkling wines and sweet wines. I did Merlot, I did uh, even Cabernet Franc last week. So I thought, why not do Malbec? Malbec, and this is the wine we're doing. And I'm excited about this wine because it's a partnership between two really big names in the wine world. We'll go over that in a little bit. It's Amancaya, and this is from Argentina. It is mostly Malbec. It's also a slight uh, blend with Cabernet Sauvignon as well. But let's talk about Malbec the grape. Like most grapes that uh, you make wine out of these days, um, it originated in uh, France, and as I mentioned a few seconds ago, planted by the Romans in 50 BC. Hello, Steve. In France, they call it Cote, C-O-T. And as is usually the case, it tastes way different in France than it does everywhere else in the world. Hey, Mom, my mother, Marianne DeMay, is tuning in live. That's This is a first. How you doing, Mom? Um, so Malbec, Cote in France is basically a uh, blending grape over there. The, it's one of the Bordeaux varieties that they mix to put together the delicious red blends from Bordeaux, France. Hello, William. And it is quite a bit different over there. Um, it is more a savory, earthy wine. It's got a lot of acidity, a very tannic. Um, in Argentina, it is a different story, a different animal entirely. And it's got an interesting story. Uh, in 18, what was it, 1868, an agronomist by the name of Michel Pouget um, from France decided, you know, I'm going to bring some vines from France and see how they do. And these vines that he brought were original vines from France before the phylloxera epidemic that I told you about, that little louse that ate the, the roots of the, of the wine, the grapes, the vines. And he brought some original vines just to see how they would do. And the Malbec planted on the slopes of the Andes Mountains did so well. Oh my goodness. Suddenly it accounted for pretty much all the wine that uh, Argentina was putting out and some really, really well-rated wines. Hello, Mary. Hello, Lori. And hello, Linda. Jerry and Linda watching. Thank you very much. Once again, for those tuning in, if you just say hello and give me a like, $50 from Riverfront Pizza and Sports Bar in Covington could be yours. And Rita, thank you for tuning in. So Malbec in France is basically a blending grape. It uh, adds a certain texture to Bordeaux. In Argentina, it is big and bold and rich and it really loves sunshine. And when you plant it on the slopes of the Andes in that high desert terrain, uh, you're, you're looking at 300 days of sunshine a year and cold nights. And we've talked about this on this broadcast before. The diurnal shift is what makes grapes really, really great because you've got heat and sun during the day. It gets all ripe. And then at night, it's not humid, so they're not going to get all mushy. It's cold at night, so it preserves the acidity. It keeps the fruit crisp. And what you've got then is a balanced grape. And the wine you make is not only fruity and ripe, but also has a little bit of um, balance to it, a little bit of structure a little bit of acidity, which keeps it fresh. And uh, some of the best wines in Argentina um, definitely are planted on the slopes of the Andes Mountains. Let me give you a, a visual aid here. To give you an idea how high these vineyards are, 
and you'll notice I got the color printer to work. The IT I got the IT guy and I last week spent about an hour, but we got it to work. So this is a vineyard in the Andes, in Argentina, and you can see it is really high. I mean, the elevation is there, and you can also see how dry and dusty that that soil is. Turns out it makes really really amazing grapes, and. Uh, this particular wine is a partnership between two really big names in the wine world. One of the um, iconic wine producers in Argentina, Nicolas Catena. And this looks like a Mayan pyramid, doesn't it? That's the winery. Isn't that cool? So they are known and have been known for about 100 years for producing high elevation wines. And um, they decided to partner recently with one of the biggest names from Bordeaux, Chateau Lafitte. Now, if you've watched certain movies from the 90s, Chateau Lafitte was one of the wines mentioned as like um, the big 80s moguls. They would really like to drink Chateau Lafitte because it was a status symbol. And even today it is. Um, Chateau Lafitte Bordeaux will probably fetch you about $1,000 a bottle on average. Is it worth it? I don't know. I certainly can't afford that, but I will say this. As I mentioned before, the mark of a really good wine is its finish. How long can you still taste it after you swallow it? And my wife and I, three years ago, had a chance to do a Bordeaux tasting. I believe it was Jungle Jim's, and we tried probably um, eight different uh, Bordeaux varieties, and we got a chance to taste Chateau Lafitte. And I tell this story a lot. Um, we had just a small little taste. It, it, uh, and as I was putting on my coat and shaking hands with the wine steward and making my way out of Jungle Gyms into the parking lot, finding my car, getting into the car, starting it and driving away, I was still tasting Chateau Lafitte. Mind boggling. One of the top three wines I've ever had in my life. I can't afford it. Uh, I don't know who can, but uh, my goodness, if you get a chance to try that, do it. So that's who we're talking about. And this is Chateau Lafitte, the Bordeaux in um, France. And this is a gorgeous castle, a chateau. And it was one of the original first growth Bordeaux designated in 1855 by Napoleon himself. So these are the people making this wine. This Amancaya. What is that word? It is actually a flower that the... Uh, native Argentina women would decorate in their hair during the spring. So these are the people making this particular wine. So you think, you think to yourself, well, let's see, one of the best winemakers in um, Argentina, one of the most expensive wines in Bordeaux, this wine has to be really expensive too, right? No, it's not. 1999. 92 points from Robert Parker. You gotta try this particular wine. So let's take a look, shall we? So a wine from Argentina is just so good. And uh, as I mentioned, it started in, um, in France. That was where most of the uh, Malbec was located. But after the huge success of the uh, experiment of planting Malbec in Argentina, suddenly it accounts, Argentina does, accounts for 75% of all Malbec in the world from Argentina, in particular the Mendoza area in the uh, slopes of the Andes. And that's where this particular wine comes from. And once again, uh, my, my experiment to find a good wine to talk to you all about, I went to a, a wine store, I think it was the Wine List in, in Westchester, and there were four bottles of Argentina uh, Malbec, and they're all about $20 or less. Tried all four, and they were really all good, but this was the best. So this is the one we're having today. So let's take a look at the color. Once again, a beautiful, rich color. Uh, what do you call that? Violet, maybe? Ruby? Somewhere in there, close to purple. And it's also got a very interesting edge. You look at the edge of the wine, it's got a really bright red edge. That's kind of indicative of uh, Argentinian Malbec. Ah, and it smells really, really amazing, too. Hello, Donna. Hello, Heidi. I, I love a, a wine that is aromatic, um, 
This one, you know, you don't have to put the hand over the, the glass to get a smell because it, it's just there. It's rich. You've got fig coming to my nose. Um, definitely some blackberry. Um, you know, it smells like an apple fritter. That, that, that's what comes to my nose. It's like, and I love apple fritters. Oh my gosh. So how does it taste? That's a lot of uh, layers of flavor uh, of aroma. Let's see how the, the flavor stacks up, shall we? Hmm. 1999, how? This is so good. Okay, so the first thing that comes out, blackberry right off the start, and then you've got a little tart cherry, and then you've got this sort of... Um, soft stewed apple sort of, sort of more that um that apple leaf flavor but then at the end you've got this um uh, it, it's it's a little bit of uh, acidity which again balances it with the fruit and then this uh, pepper peppery finish uh, i'm going to call it i'm going to call it black pepper because that's that's kind of what i have at the end of the tongue so it's a nice dry finish it's uh it's got some uh, some zing to it but plenty of fruit and all kinds of different flavors and this is one of those wines where you let it sit, you take a sip, five minutes later it's going to taste even better because it's just one of those wines that opens up and develops in the glass. Hello, Dan. Hello, Heidi again. Um, the other interesting thing about Argentina and the winemakers makers there, they love to experiment. They're like mad scientists. I mean, we're talking about really high elevation vineyards. How high is too high? They're trying to find out. Um, they are looking for interesting techniques. And this particular wine, once again, the Amancaya, is aged half in French oak and half in concrete vats. So you've got an interesting mix there. And uh, you, you can kind of taste, there's just a little mineral in the end with the, with the peppery finish. Hello, Robert and Jennifer. Hello again. So once again, let me know you're here. And somebody's going to win that $50 Riverfront Pizza and Sports Bar Family Restaurant in Covington. A $50 gift card could be yours just for saying hello. This is a really nice wine, and it's a really good price. $19.99, 92 points. Robert Parker, 91 points from Wine Enthusiast. Lots of flavor. And again, if this were a California Cabernet, if this were a Bordeaux, you'd be spending 10 times more than this. But because it's Argentina, you get a great bargain. They make wonderful wines, and if you get about $18 to $20 and you pick up almost any Argentina Malbec, you're going to you're gonna luck out with uh, good taste. What do you pair it with? Somebody just asked. Um, any grilled red meat. Um, this would taste really good with grilled beef, with lamb, and you know what? This is kind of weird. Um, uh, like a gourmet cheeseburger, maybe like even with a little blue cheese. This would go really well because you've got just enough zing to kind of cut through that, but the, the fruit and everything else would really, uh, really do well. So 70% Malbec, 30% Cabernet Sauvignon. This is the 2017 Reserve Amancaya Red Blend, mostly Malbec. I hope you go out and try it, and I hope you like it. Hello, Sam, and hello, Lori. You'd pair it with a second glass. <laughs> I would too, to be perfectly honest. I think I'll stick with just this one because I'm driving home tonight. But thank you very much for watching. And uh, whether it's on demand or delay, let me know that you're here because I need to find somebody to win that $50 Riverfront Sports Pizza Bar in Covington gift card. It might as well be you. Happy Wine Wednesday Live. Once again, if you've got a suggestion for future broadcasts, let me know right here in the comments. Give me a like. Any suggestions or questions, I will answer them directly. And I'll see you next week on Wine Wednesday.